Well, there was a time in in which the inner and the outer were were together. There was no suggestion of the inner or the outer. It it was the the crops grew with spiritual blessing. The you you baked your bread with with a prayer. The, every every child was born and went through certain initiations as they grew older and becoming part of the community was a spiritual initiation and the people who led the community were the spiritual elders you still see that in native american where it was the the shaman was the was a guiding force behind the tribe and it is only say so only recently that we have had this split and this is part of the the age of reason, this split between spirit and matter, between outer and inner, that has given us the fruits of science, the fruits of materialism, has sent rockets to the moon, but has caused an immense poverty in that we live in a world that we have consciously divorced from spirit. Of course, nothing can really be divorced from spirit because the mystic knows that the spirit is the foundation of everything, just as the alchemists say there is this light hidden in matter, or the, the mystic sees the, the name of God written in every cell of creation. And so we are actually living in, in a state of consciousness, completely at variance with what is real, with what is present, because, um, say, as the mystic knows, it, everything is made according to the will of God, and everything is made with the substance of love. But uh, the consciousness we have inherited and the education system we have has denied that. So we build these sandcastles not knowing the tide is going to come in and, uh, and maybe there will be a, a shift, maybe there, will, maybe there will be a return to a more, in a way, a reasonable way of life that, that honors the spirit that, that is within everything. And, that is a way of life, that we live in harmony with the world around us rather than imposing this rational consciousness, which I say has, in a short space of time, produced this extraordinary flowering of, of science and materialism, but at the cost of the soul and at the cost of a deep, deep wound that humanity carries, this lack of direct connection to the soul, lack of honoring what is sacred, within ourselves and within life and within our neighbor and and how we will reclaim that way of life which is the only sustainable way just as ecology has shown us we have to live in a state of ecological oneness in order to ecologically survive I would take it even further we have to live in a state of spiritual oneness in order that our souls survive but how we are going to make that shift from this very, very divisive world who say consciousness has become this very, very repressive force um, is really going to be the, the, the landmark of, 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 of the next, some people say 20 years or 100 years because we can no longer sustain ourselves as we are at the present moment. But it will be a difficult time of transition because it is such a fundamental shift away from the ego, away from greed, away from the focus on worldly power to honoring something which is both much more present, actually, and yet more spiritual. <laughs>